one of my all-time favorite videos we've ever done on the channel was Silver Ridge Peaks versus the biggest possible weapons. But in the three plus years since that video came out, so much has changed, including the recent animal class changes, that the loadout required to hunt this map with the biggest possible weapons is now entirely different. Now you may be wondering, how do I actually determine what is the biggest possible weapon for each species? And the answer is really quite simple. Take Pronghorn for instance, they are a class three. So I go through all the weapons and ammo, find one with a minimum of class three, and then whatever has the highest ethical class, that's what we choose for that species. So with Pronghorn, the 44 is classes three to eight, nothing else goes all the way up to class eight. This is also ethical for class three. Now, in theory, we could have gone with the 44 lever action, I had to get Pack Mule, and we still are absolutely full with this loadout. We've got the 470, the 338, the 9.3 drilling rifle, the 4570 handgun, the 44, and of course the 22H for Turkey. So this should be a lot of fun. And we get started with a little double long shot here on that pronghorn right at 75 meters. Weird <laughs> face he's making right when we took that shot. But I'm looking forward to this. We have a lot of really big weapons today. So pronghorn were one of the major changes. Mule deer or the other one? Using the 9.3 for mule deer, I think is gonna be pretty cool. That's a solid buck. I'm tempted to try to shoot him in the neck, but the entire point is kind of to go for like lung and heart shots. Otherwise, you know, we could make a neck shot that insta drops him with a much weaker caliber. So if he'll turn and just pick a spot through the trees where we can actually get a shot, that ought to do. And because they've now been moved down to class five, that's what actually brings the 9.3 into effect here. And we don't get to use it that much. So I think that's gonna be a nice addition. And a pretty nice buck for our first one with the drilling combo gun. 262 score, double lunged him way up high actually. Didn't mean to shoot that high, but got the job done. And I think those are probably the two that are like the weakest weapon for that species. Obviously both ran with a double lung shot. A lot of the stuff out here, maybe other than Plains Bison, I don't expect to be going very far. So finally, we do actually have a max weight estimate Bison. Goes up to 178 on the score. Of course he is in that absolute mess. <laughs> and that two completely block off any shot we could have had. If we can get him spotted again. Which one even is he? He's all the way back there. If we could have been ready, that would have been nice. Man, that is a heck of a bang. That got the lungs? Hopefully next time it's a little bit more slow paced. I'd like to try to line up a couple of heart shots and stuff like that, but thus far, everything's kind of happening a little faster than expected. So we're all the way down here in Bearwallow Basin. It's also pretty much the end of Bison drink time. Suppose we'll go and try to grab him, and then maybe we can start to wander north and see what we run into up there. We should be getting into like mountain goat territory, and I think that'll be a lot of fun trying to take them with the 4570 handgun. I don't even know where I have that in this loadout. That could be something that could be a little bit of a problem. We're probably going to be equipping the wrong weapon a lot, carrying six of them. But finally, we did get to use the 470. Double lung, actually. Not bad. Little forward, if anything, 169 score. We will definitely take that, and hopefully we do get some other ones as we go along. But I say we start to scoot up towards Burnt Rock and see what we find between here and there. So we do actually have a level four male mountain goat up here. I'm hoping if we can get him to go alert and maybe turn back towards us, we can finally get to use the 4570 handgun. Now, in theory, we maybe would have wanted the seven mil, but to be able to carry all these different weapons, <laughs> the spotting info went away so fast. That is the fun of these loadouts to just see what kind of destruction you can put down on these maps. But anyway, the seven mil would have probably made a little more sense, but we've got 23 units with pack mule. I think we're at 22 and a half carrying the guns, the scopes and everything else. We just couldn't afford to carry a full size rifle. So we've got the handgun and it clearly can get the job done. I wanted to get one more shot off, but we should get plenty of opportunities to continue to use that. That had to be heart and maybe like something else. Heart and both lungs just annihilated that mountain goat. Not too bad, 93.34 scoring gold. That is the kind of thing we want on this hunt. Took a little time to get it, but I would say that was worth it. I would say rarely do we go and try to shoot something just because the gun did something kind of awesome, but we're going to try to get this mountain goat 
just like it disappears so fast. I think this might have been the right choice. I guess the 7 mil probably does it too, but that just pretty much shows how quickly the animal expires. Like even if you use a weaker gun and make a hard shot, you'll see the health tick down. You'll see that spawning info stay on screen for just a little bit longer. Maybe we'll get to demonstrate it later. The 4570 is crushing these things. It was hard and double lung again, just through the top of the heart. Gold at 88. I'm glad we finally got to see that because the first three shots were just kind of like not as powerful a weapon relative to the species as maybe we would have wanted. Now this I think could be pretty fun. We've got the 9.3 also for mountain lions, them being a class five. And I don't think we need a heart shot here. Now she's alarmed, back to alert. It's just doing a lot of moving around, making this tough on us. But, oh, actually that does an insta drop. It still brought it down really fast. That is good to know though. For any future ones, we definitely want to try to line up that heart shot. Also interesting, I don't have 16 gauge ammo. I didn't realize that the gun still shows it in the shotgun barrels, whether you've got any on you or not. If we go into our inventory, no 16 gauge ammo anywhere. Regardless of that though, the one thing we know, the 9.3 ammo has really good penetration. Like you see it basically exited the far side lung. Still got to try to go for hard shots for maximum carnage here. A nice little gray female. It's the beginning of Bighorn drink time and wouldn't mind getting to see the 4570 do that kind of stuff again. Might get to have that opportunity sooner rather than later. Actually, I forgot this is another one that had a class change here on Silver Ridge Peaks. Bighorn are class five now. So how is the 9.3 going to handle this? We're gonna try to get in because we can only zero. If we go all the way to the max up to 150. I'd like to get to that range so we can hit this as well as possible. It's a max estimate four. We're into about 190 now. And I don't think the reads are gonna be too big an issue. So like 170 or whatever is gonna be fine. That starts to obstruct them pretty good. So see if we can line this up. If we can get the hard shot, we'll go for it. That's what we wanna see. Just absolutely folded them out there at about 170. That's pretty cool. We really get to make use of the 9.3 a little more than I realized we were going to. So the one question is, did we need the heart shot to do that? We didn't, that was just double lung. So the heart sits pretty far forward on Bighorn. We might try one. We basically gotta, sh gotta shoot through like the front of the shoulder. I'd really like to see what happens. I imagine it's similar to what we saw with the mountain goat. So almost the exact same Bighorn, 141 to 163 this time. And we're gonna try to line the shot up a little further forward. I feel like I can see the contour of the shoulder where we need to aim. Just want to make sure we're close enough that we don't end up low. 160 should be fine. So let's see if we're zero for 150. And try to put this right at the front of the shoulder. He tried. To, oh, of course, we have to go for like a frontal shot. He moved right when it was time to take the shot. Luckily, we caught it and didn't just fire. But now we're looking at a completely different kind of thing. I mean, he kind of stopped back broadside. I think that might have been a hard shot. I really can't tell because we know double lung insta drops him anyway. And it's a good thing it does because if he took even like a step, he was going right in the water. That still was just double lung we shot over the heart. 147.66 for that guy. So at the very end of Bighorn drink time, Mule Deer are actually starting to drink now. And maybe we can take some of that same logic and try to heart shot them. If we get another chance at a Bighorn, we kind of know maybe what to do, aim a little bit lower. But I think we're gonna go and start to focus on the Mule Deer. So inevitably, having a loadout of six weapons, something was gonna get kind of underutilized. Oh, definitely didn't shoot the right bird there, but it was going to be the 22H. I mean, unless we found the most insane server for turkeys with like multiple level threes and rares, we just weren't gonna get to use it that much. Did we get them both? Like, I know we hit another bird. I saw wings flapping. I only see the gobbler laying there though, unless, is that the hen there? Oh, it is. <laughs> if there's one gun for this particular job, this, oh my goodness. <laughs> I don't, th <laughs> I don't think we'll ever do that again. Accidental brain shot on a turkey with the 22 H. I don't know how well we could see it. There was probably grass in the way. I really want to slow-mo that and see what it looked like because <laughs> that is absurd. And then a much more normal lung and liver shot 
on, I think that says 4.33, a very smallish gold gobbler. I am so glad that just happened. So back to the task at hand, trying to drop some mule deer with a 9.3. That's a pretty good one. <laughs> I would say that's a pretty dead one. I'm pretty sure there's a couple others around this corner that we haven't yet spotted. I didn't really want to take that shot yet, but he was already alarmed. There's bighorn going everywhere. I think this is where we shot the first uh, bighorn, actually. Maybe that's all that took off. Not as many mule deer as expected. There's a whole bunch still over there, but none nearly as big as the one we shot. So I think we made the right call. And no doubt about this one, straight through the heart and both lungs, little high. So maybe good to keep in mind, but a 256 score. And we're going to try to jump around to a couple of mule deer lakes. And we still, by the way, have not even gotten to fire the 338. I think, because we did get hosted this server, maybe after Mule Deer we'll go ahead and make it Rocky Mountain Elk drink time and just try to blast some of them. And potentially, depending on if this particular map has the new bear zones activated or not, we might get to shoot some black bear too. I mean, that's one way to find a black bear, just running along here. Pretty much could have predicted that's what would happen because we did use the 338 for pretty much all of our black bear grinding. And if you can get them through the lungs, that is the reaction you get, especially when they're on the run. And it does look pretty darn cool. So just a level five, and I'm kind of thinking maybe not the best mule deer server, just not much of anything out here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go and check this spot here and then maybe this lake, I think mule deer hang out there. And then we'll go ahead and rest the morning. Ooh, are you serious? We don't need elk drink time for anything. I knew that was a massive frame. Level five elk up to 559 he's darn near a guaranteed diamond diamond is 480 something i don't know where they're headed that is a monster though if we can get i mean i guess we can go for the shot from here i'd like to try to hard shot him just for the sake of it but what i don't want to happen is for him to just walk out of our lives and make this a hundred times tougher if we don't see the front one starting to maybe go into a zone probably we just alert him i think they rest this time of day you know what i didn't think through all the mountain lions to start to go crazy this time of day we just i hear footsteps i really hope they're not right up here because i don't know how we're gonna do this we don't know where they drink and we could assume they might drink here but they also could drink way farther away and that can make things a whole lot tougher i like i'm tempted to try to climb up the lookout tower these things are getting close though. I can't see how these elk aren't gonna end up fleeing from it. So yeah, I think they did kind of run back past us at least to some degree. And now it gets just infinitely more complicated. Hopefully we can stay on the track. There were two max estimate bulls. So I'm not even 100% sure that I'm on the right one. Pretty sure that's our guy there up to 559. That's definitely the right bull. I don't know like, with him being nervous, I'm not sure with no 22, one thing you can do between 200 and 250 meters is alert them just by shooting into the air. I think we're going to try it because I don't love the odds of trying to get down there close and alert him. So I'm going to back up maybe a little bit more just to be safe. And then if we just fire off around here, we'll just chamber another one. He should just go alert, which he has. And I think what we're going to do is wait for him to try to go broadside. Might as well zero for 300. And as soon as he kind of spins, that's when we're going to try to get our shot. I have no idea where any other mountain lines are or anything like that. We don't want them to mess us up. That should get him. Not exactly the heart shot that I was hoping to deliver, but after everything that went on, mountain lines spooking him, I will take a double long shot any day. And I mean, even still... Vital blood there, dead elk right behind it. I don't think he left a single track in between. One thing I noticed, he's got really tiny, like, back times there. So I'm curious, like, if that really means anything. Let's see. 500.74. I don't think we have any that are, like, right on the dot 500 with this frame. Double lung, though, from the 338, 244 meters away. That is a pretty darn nice looking elk. Light brown fur type. And after a little over two hours out here, just blasting stuff with the biggest absolute cannons that we have, we have a diamond that we can add back to the trophy lodge. 
I'm kind of, so that was the full session score, by the way. That shows just how good the 338 did at that range. I don't think we're even going to reset back to morning now. We'll run around a little bit longer here. See if we can maybe get one more thing. I don't know that we've used, like, the 44 much. We can maybe try to find a pronghorn. Where is this thing? It's got to be just out of sight somehow. I never heard or saw where it went. Well, anyway, <laughs> guess we'll go and try to find a pronghorn to probably wrap up the video. So maybe not the most impressive pronghorn. I think that's the only male that's here. But hopefully an opportunity to at least try to get a drop shot with the 44. I kind of think at this range, we might be able to get one with a lung shot. The thing about pronghorn, their hearts are really tiny. So my thought is, the best thing to do probably is get like double lung liver or something like that. I'm trying to sidestep this doe. We finally have a chance. Still didn't is to drop him, though I think a little bit better than the first one. And obviously the 44 doesn't necessarily like fit into this loadout as well as some of the other stuff today. And maybe we'll do a second iteration of this where we switch it up and maybe use the 44 lever action instead of the revolver and swap something else out. Now we did miss the liver. Still aimed a little too far forward there. Crazy to see what that round does though. Like coming out the neck. Either way, that was a ton of fun, like just the devastation some of those rounds were having. And we get to take a diamond elk back to the trophy lodge to boot. So all the way back in February of 2021, we shot this guy, a 491 scoring bull. Now, I think the frame actually ends up looking bigger. If we kind of stand in the same place here and put up our 500 instead, the antlers definitely don't go nearly as high on the wall, but it's the mass that really makes the difference. And I think since this guy is higher scoring, We'll leave him there. The results of a biggest possible weapon taunt on Silver Ridge Peaks. I think the last time we did it, we killed a big piebald pronghorn, a diamond Rocky Mountain Elk here today. Maybe we can bring that loadout to some other maps and see how that does. But anyway, I think that's going to do it for this video. That was a ton of fun. Like, just getting to see what the 4570 did, what the 9.3 did, just the whole idea of the video, it worked out so perfectly. But thank you guys for watching. And I'll see you next time.